there, my friend, Paul Mack here with my favorite farm tool, the garden hoe, part two. Uh, today, I wanna start off by talking to you about the different kinds of garden hoes there are. They're all different kinds of shapes. But uh, if you missed part one, you might wanna go back and watch that. Uh, if you did see it, um, you know, I was being kind of mean when I talked about this hoe here being uh, a basically a concrete mixer, which, you know, of course it is, and that's what it does best. But there are legitimate uses for it in the garden. Now, hoes of this shape, basically kind of rectangular, maybe square, rectangular, the, the common name for these hoes are draw hoes because you're drawing the dirt towards you. And really that's what this hoe is most useful for, is for drawing large amounts of dirt towards you when you're hilling something up. It's kind of awkward for actually killing the weeds. You'll need a smaller hoe for that. But like I said, these are draw hoes. Uh, I've got some different shaped ones here. If you'll notice, they have different, if you can, can you see this? They have different depths and widths across here come in all different shapes and rectangular sizes and so forth. And there's, that's a good thing. There's, there's a purpose for that because the, the more depth you've got, you can actually pull more dirt towards you without it falling over the top there. For weeding, this narrow depth is better. Um, plus you can, you don't forget, you know, when you're, when you're weeding, whoops, when you're weeding, you can turn that hoe on its side and you've got even more precision when you're trying to go in there and, and, and kill that weed. So you've got it like that and, and you can turn it, which is why you want the, uh, edges as sharp as the, as, as the bottom there so that you can get in and weed. Now the widths. There are different widths, and that's basically useful for chopping plants. Have you ever heard of chopping? It's like, not like chopping wood, but uh, chopping cotton. You've probably heard that term before. And a lot of people confuse that. They don't really understand what chopping, chopping cotton means. Uh, it basically, when um, many times uh, when they were planting cotton, they would overplant. They would plant more seed in the furrow than really needed to grow there because they wanted it, um, they wanted a good stand of it. They didn't want gaps in case some of those seeds didn't germinate, so they would overplant it. But as it started to grow, you've got to thin it out. You don't want all those plants growing, all those cotton plants growing so close to one another because they'll uh, you know, rob the, each other of the nutrients. So you've got to thin them out. And the way they thin them out would be chopping out the plants that didn't need to be there. And they would end up, you know, if, imagine a long, steady row of plants. It doesn't have to be cotton. It could be corn or anything. And you, you have enough seed, you overplant that. And then as it starts to grow, you're going to want to go in and thin it. Well, you can use different width hose to actually chop out the portions you don't want and just leave everything on either edge. So if you went in with this hoe and chopped out your width, your spacing for those plants in the row would be about like this. And then you go over and chop the next one out and then chop the next one out and, and you're basically spacing as you go. If you wanted your spacing a little bit wider, you might use a wider hoe for chopping that out. So, uh, and you know, if you wanted very narrow spacing, like uh, for onions, you might use one of these other hoes I'm gonna show you about in a little bit. That's very, very, even more narrow than this right here. Another thing that, that draw hoes are good at, particularly probably, you know, this one, uh, the concrete mixer, would be if you're in those instances when you don't have a planter that you're planting the seed with, it's dropping the seed automatically, some mechanical device, and you want to plant your uh, seeds by hand, for bean seeds or whatever, corn, and you go through, you open up a furrow with maybe a hoe or a push plow, and then you drop your seeds in, and then you come back with a draw hoe, and you can lightly draw that dirt back on top of the, on top of the seed, and then you can go back and tamp it down with the top of the hoe. You know, you do 
maybe a couple of feet worth and then tamp and then a couple of feet worth. By the way, when you're covering that seed, if you'll find that just that right angle, you can bring that hoe along um, kind of like that. You're almost like you're grading the dirt and you're just pulling just the right amount of however deep you, those particular seed need to be. You get that feel for pulling just that right amount of dirt on top of those seeds and then going back and tamping down so that they're, they're firm, that dirt is firm because then the moisture uh, can wick out and on its way out it um, what do you go? It moistens the seed and causes that germination to happen. So the concrete mix, I mean, sorry, the draw hoe, this type of draw hoe would be very good for those kind of applications. This one is very, very wide draw hoe for, you know, raking a good good amount of dirt. I, I kind of like that. It's, it's lightweight. Um, but that wouldn't be hard to rig up some kind of handle for. It's hard to weed with a big, tall, hole like this and it's hard to draw a lot of dirt and move a lot of dirt with a narrow hole like this so you know different size draw hoes have their different purposes there and then you have a different kind of hoe and these aren't quite as common you've got the uh it's called a warren warren hoe w-a-r-r-e-n warren hoe it's also called a Dutch hoe. Well, not this one, but uh, where's my, oh, this one. These right here. And you'll notice that these are triangular, heart-shaped. That's a weird heart. Triangular, basically. And they come to a point. And you can imagine this would be good for chopping um, uh, th things that you want not spaced real far apart, maybe like onion row or something like that. Plus, you can get a lot of precision uh, with that point. You know, you, you go in and you get just right beside that plant. You can just nudge it a little bit and then stick the end in and just pull that dirt. It's just so fun. It's so fun to hoe. It really is. Have you ever tried it? It's nice love it also with the wide edge and again you'd want to sharpen these just like you'd sharpen a, a draw hoe and then you can get in there and uh, if you get that right angle and you can with this wide side you can just draw the dirt back up to the plant so this is another one you, you may have your preference you might like a draw hoe better you might like this kind of hoe better doesn't matter Don't, whatever you you know then what we have is another hoe called oh right where did it go oh yeah this hoe, I don't have a handle for this particular hoe, but uh, this is a kind of a common hoe that you'll find. My, my parents, my mama and my daddy, when they were hoeing the garden, I think they had several of these. I, I think, let's see, what, crescent moon, um, doesn't look a lot like a moon. Looks more like a bat, doesn't it? Like, like Batman, bat hoe. Um, but these are very useful too. They're they're more curved, obviously, and then you've got that point, just like the the Dutch hoe, the Warren hoe. But you can also you know do that shearing action and and then draw up just a little bit. So these are fine hoes too. I really like them. Crescent moon, half moon, crescent moon hoe. There's another kind of hoe called a a D is it D D hoe or a stirrup hoe, you know, kind of looks like a stirrup. Uh, th this actually is a D hoe that goes on my push plow, but I have seen uh, hoes that have a handle and they have this here and obviously you would sharpen one edge and you can go through um, with that on the hoe while you're standing up and it, it that knife, this knife just rides right under the crust of the soil and delodges the weed from its root. The weed doesn't even know what it's hit. What, what's hit it? It's just still standing there. That's kind of a nice hoe to have too. It's really nice for the push plow. I'll show you that sometime. So that's the D hoe or stirrup hoe, as it's called. There's different kinds of combination hoes. Uh, here's one here. I remember letting my kids, uh, my daughters use this one. On one end it's got three tines that are useful for stirring the dirt or whatever, not really useful for 
bedding up obviously but uh, then you can turn it around and do a little bedding with this one this one's just really it's cheap metal it's uh, really lightweight the handle is very light um, it's, it's not my favorite hoe but uh, I have killed a few snakes with it Ho hoes are great for kill did I say that out loud I didn't mean uh, killing snakes we don't kill snakes here we um, venomous snakes we um, we just relocate them to heaven. There's another combination hoe. Um, I don't know where I found that one. This, this might be homemade. I'm not really sure. It looks like somebody took a, a foot off a tractor cultivator, cut it off, put a bevel on it, and drive that down in a really stout handle, and you've got another combination hoe. You can, you can even open up a furrow, you know, with this hoe, with really any hoe, but the Warren hoe or whatever, you open up your furrow if you you know, gonna plant something and then you can do some digging or chopping. This has got a lot of weight to it. Another combination hoe is, uh, I don't really have a name for it. I don't have one here, so I'll try to draw you a picture of it. It uh, kind of looks like a bunny rabbit and it's got a, it's got two little ears on one side, then just kind of a draw hoe, a narrow draw hoe on the other one. And that's useful for, you know, things. I don't, I don't know what to call it other than the bunny, bunny rabbit hoe, which sounds weird. And then as far as unusual hoes, I've got one that really has no classification. I, I found this one not, uh, not too long ago. And look at that. It's kind of a draw hoe and a trapezoid shape. And that one's useful for some narrow chopping and, uh, weeding. If I put a good bevel on it so I kind of like that one that brings us to another kind of hoe you've probably heard of it's called the grub grubbin hoe grub hoe or grubbin grubbin uh, with a G or without a G grubbin hoe and I've got three of these they don't have handles on them the unique thing about this is that they have an eye for the handle kind of like a fro like for making shakes or shingles and it's the hole is uh, slightly smaller on this end than this end so you can take uh, you can make your own long handle with it and make it slightly tapered there at the end so that when you get it in and drive it in you know you can leave a little bit sticking out drive it in really hard and uh and there you have a grubbing hoe now ob obviously this a long narrow type of draw hoe and you can pull large amounts of dirt you know the wider the wider you have one the more dirt you can pull there's a really wide one there and um but this they have a little more weight to them generally they, they weigh two or three times more than a normal hoe so you can really get some digging done with it i guess it's kind of like a you know kind of like a mattock except you don't have a pick on the other end and my my father made this one it says see it says John L. made this. Um, he just welded some pieces together. He was a expert welder in his day and made him a little grubbing hoe here. You know, I wanted to I, I mentioned my my kids using uh, this hoe here when they were little. Uh, they're all grown now. Well, pretty much they think they are. And um, it's it's good to get kids uh, started using a hoe as early as possible. And you know, you might what you might want to do is find you a good, a decent hoe, um, not a concrete. Well, they can mix concrete if they want to. That's good for kids too. But get them a good hoe, and you might want to, at some point, you know, find one and I don't know, uh, cut off. I know it's a it seems like a waste of a good handle, but you know it's for the kids. It's a good investment. Find them a good hoe, and cut the handle off to where it's a good size for them. Because you know it doesn't need to be too long for a kid. And then, as if they grow, then get them another hoe for crying out loud. But uh, get them a good hoe that they can use and cut it off, and then round off the ed the, the end of it here. And uh, you know it's not too not too early to get kids out there and enjoying this and and, and teach them you know teach them to stand up straight, don't bend over and do all that you know like my mama taught me. But uh, you know the the kids they can do that and you think well my plants you know you you plant that row or whatever and you don't want anything to happen to even one of those plants. And you think well my kids get out there they're going to accidentally chop up 
some of the plants as they're learning how to do it. And yes, that is correct. They will kill some of the plants. To tell you the truth, I I still kill one or two every every now and then. But yeah, it, it's a good investment. They'll they might kill a plant or two or five or six, but it's it's a good investment in your kids to teach them number one how to work and number two how to do it well um but, you know they, i know they can they're good at working them video games they can work them fingers they can take a hoe and, and hold a garden too they'll, they'll love it they'll love it after four or five hours of it they, they'll have to so so where can you find a good hoe uh, some hardware stores are getting i have noticed some of them are getting a little bit better and farm and ranch store maybe your feed store are, are getting a little bit better about having good hoes instead of just concrete mixers on hand um i've, I've even seen some of the uh, you know the the uh what did we call that crescent moon or batwing hose available at hardware stores those are good to start with uh i always like looking in the lehman's catalog lehman's is a non-electric catalog based out of kidron ohio and i bought one of my first good hose as an adult uh, a gardener, farmer. I bought one from Lehman's and still use it today. Uh, it's a fine, fine hoe. You can also, you know, like like we always do, we find them at the flea markets or the garage sales or auctions. You find a good uh, hoe. Be looking at the handle. Uh, you want a good stout handle. Like I said, remember the, you know, find the midpoint and it needs to be at least a third of the length of the hoe, if not a little longer. And you'll know, it just feels, feels good, feels good. Um, but you know, the handle, is, the handle is not necessarily a deal breaker. If it doesn't have a handle or if the handle is cracked or rotted, uh, you know, you could always make a new handle. That's a challenge for you, but it's a good skill to learn. What I really like, and I'll, I'll show you something. I've got several here that, uh, when I find them and they're cheap, or sometimes they'll be in the bottom of a box at an auction and I'll just throw them in a pile. Uh, I've got some uh, all need handles. But what I, and see this one, some of these handles, I, I meant to show you, some of these handles, these hoes, have cuffs on them and they're two pieces. You've got the hoe head, which is something like that. It's got a little, sometimes they have a little hole there, a notch, and it's just a round uh, metal shaft. And then you've got a cuff, and then they fit into the hole of the hoe. And that's kind of difficult to uh, fashion that. It's difficult to drill a hole straight down end grain wise into a hoe. That's kind of a trick to do. Uh, but a lot of these hoes are made on a lathe you know, at a factory. Of course, that's, we don't always have a lathe that's five or six foot long. And so you'll probably have to take a hickory if you make a handle. and. Uh, this tree, you know, small tree, not a big one, knot free, preferably about that big around, half it and then quarter it. And you'll, you got four chances to make a good hoe and take it to the draw knife and start working on it and whittling it down until you get a decent shape. But what, one of the things I really like when I find them are certain hoes that have a built-in cuff on them. They're, they're actually one piece. Some of these are quite old sometimes, and it looks like this one, this is a really neat one, it looks like this one is pretty old. I can tell by looking at the metal, and probably was hand-forged at some time, but there's a seam. You can barely see a little seam right here, and it's still got the wood, the rotted wood from the handle that I need to get out of there, and the rivets are in there. But it's got a seam and it looks like uh, the blacksmith just um, uh, laid out, you know, uh, pounded that metal until it was flat and spread out and then formed a cuff. And it looks like he forge welded it back together, which is quite a trick if that's what he did. Anyway, I like these that have the built in cuffs because once you get the old handle out and the, the rivets out, grind those rivets out. You can just make a conical hose, stick it in there, and then put your rivets in, and you got a good tight hose. See, these are the same way. It's got the old handles still in them, but they've got cuffs are actually one piece. The whole hoe is one piece. These are 
probably pretty old when you find them like I don't know how old but they're older than modern we'll just say that I like those better and I really here's one right here that's one piece with the handle and everything still going this one as well my favorite one is one piece I really see it's got a seam on it too right there but I really like that and then this one like that weird one I was showing you you know it's got a built-in cuff that can't find, I don't see the, yeah, it's just kind of, what is that? That's kind of got a crimp in it to hold the handle on or something. Anyway, that's that's a neat little design there. Of course, you know, if you wanted to, you could, if you, you could weld on a piece of metal here, if you're a handy blacksmith and, and draw that out. I was talking to a friend about that. You could just draw that out yourself and pound on it till it's flat and then bring it back around and just form anything that'll stick on the end of a handle. But you know, you can find good hose without the handles and just collect them for a rainy day. Uh, or you can find them preferably with a good one. And you know, if you find a really good one, be willing to pay a little bit more for it and it'll be your new favorite farm tool. Also, if you're out in the field and a, a hose starts getting kind of you know, getting kind of loose. I think I have one that's, yeah, this one's a little bit loose. If you're out in the field and you're working and it's not winter yet and you don't have time to really fix it right, you can just take a nail and shove it down in there, drive it in and, and, and firm it up a little bit. Anything to get you going when you're running and gunning out in the garden. If you have a hard time finding that perfect um, hoe or, or hard time buying one near you, what you could do is take just a regular hoe like this. It's got a decent stout handle if possible and take a, a hand grinder and with a cutting wheel on it and just cut, cut it a little more narrow right here, cut it right there and uh, whittle it down, maybe put a edge on it. You shape it however you want it to. And then, you know, heat, you might need to heat that up on a forge and bend it, put a little angle on it. You know, you could just take a regular draw hoe and make it more in the shape that you want it to be. Uh, even even more narrower than that if you wanted to. And put an angle on the sides if you wanted to. If you like that. Just whatever. Sh come up with your own hoe. And then they'll name it after you. Wouldn't that be honorable? I guess that th that will do it for my favorite farm tool not the concrete mixer uh, but the garden hoe i'm paul mack and i will talk at you later Hey, I want to thank you so much for watching my favorite farm tool. Please take a little time to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you feel so inclined, you can support the show on Patreon. Just go to patreon.com and look for Farman's Companion. And also, I want you to remember, this show is not a secret. So please feel free to pass along the links of these little video offerings of mine on your cellular telephones or other digitological devices, I'd really, really appreciate it.